Give him heaven on earth for a hell of a check. Yeah, whichever come first. Blessings on blessings on blessings. Look at my life, man. That's lessons on lessons on lessons. I treat this beat like it's a reverend. The truth. Forgive me. These are all my confessions, man. This was a luck. It was destined. I done lost homies who've been with me since Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Who flip like a fetty. And then when you back, they back to call you dog. That shit can get petty. Bitch, don't get no dap to me, nigga. Funny thing about talking behind my back is that. All right, what is up, guys? I'm going to mute this here. Make sure you can actually see me well. Um, so today we're going to talk about how life is a lonely business. By the way, my new mug. Kind of awesome. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? Okay, we're going to dive right into this because I have an interview with Chad Cotery at 11, and we're going to dive into fulfillment and how to actually have a really good fulfillment team to increase retention. Let me move this back. Okay, make sure we can still see that really well um, because as a digital marketing agency owner, we're not going to talk about this now, but retention is like the lifeblood of your business if you want to continue to scale holistically um, and how to build a team. So we're going to talk about this right here. This is a major topic, guys, because if you're in entrepreneurship, this is like a really tough thing to deal with. And I'm going to let you know how I've been able to deal with it and based on mentors I've communicated with and books that I've been reading and really how to develop my mindset because everybody's just... Again, everybody's always talking about wanting to grow a business, but what they don't really realize is that so much of that has to do with mindset, and if your mindset isn't honed in, the likelihood of you actually growing that business is gonna be really difficult, and then you're gonna get caught up in all the wrong stuff, and then you're not gonna be able to continually grow the business, and then it might actually end up tanking on you. So um, here's what we're gonna talk about. There's really only two things. I only have 20 minutes, so it's probably be a short 15, 20 minute video, if that. Uh, hashtag live, you guys are jumping on. Like the post too. Uh, this is a topic that you guys have been a little bit like interested in hearing. Yeah, you guys like the mug. If you guys don't know, if you guys ever want to send me any gifts, I am a huge uh, mug. What's the word? Um, I don't know. Kind of sore. I don't know what the word would be. But yeah, this is the new mug. Check that out. All right, so let's dive into the first one because remember, we're just going to get right into it because I don't have a whole lot of time, but I know this is a really important topic. I know a lot of people have wanted to figure out how, um, here's the thing, life's a lonely business. Have you guys ever heard the saying, um, it's lonely at the top? Who put, put a one in the comments box if you guys have ever heard that before, it's lonely at the top. So here's the truth, it's very true. Um, yeah, so guys, it, it, it is true. Um, as you continue to progress and engulf yourself in a process to be great at it, it is lonely at the top. And um, when it comes to the internet, it's great because, you know, you can surround yourself with people that are like-minded and really pushing towards that next level, next level of mindset, but the problem is they aren't around you often, right? So um, the first thing that you're going to have to battle is going to be this, and it's going to be validation. And I want to really talk about why that's going to be so important because whenever you build something or make something or do something... You as a person and us just as human beings, we want to be able to hear from somebody else that, man, you did a great job. And I'm sure a lot of people watching this live right now have heard of the five love languages, which I never thought was a thing, but it turns out it is a thing, like a, a big deal actually. Um, but in terms of validation, one of the hardest things in business is that we kind of have to separate ourselves from that emotional attachment. We have to find out how we can be able to create this within ourself and our work. And this comes with falling in love with your purpose and your passion. And if you are falling in love with your purpose and your passion, it, you're not gonna be left to want to get validation from other people, you won't need it. And that's gonna be so important because you need to, actually made a post about this earlier today. You need to be able to give, because givers get more and you need to be able to give without any intention on receiving anything in return. Validation, when it comes down to that, like if your product or whatever you do is really, really good, um, then eventually this is going to start compounding and then like validation will start to pour in. But realistically, you're not going to get any of this right away, right? Like people just see what you're doing as something you're supposed to be doing. So anyway, validation is going to be the number one thing you want to overcome, not necessarily that you have to get because you're not going to. Um, so the second thing that everyone's going to have to work on in the terms of being able to fight this, because remember, the loneliness of life in business is going to be because you're not going to be around the like-minded people that want to pursue what you're doing as aggressively as you do. They're not passionate about it like you are. Um, hashtag live guys if you're jumping on right now. <clears throat> so validation is going to be the number one thing you guys have to be able to control within yourself and that's creating happiness within yourself. 
And there's a lot of different ways to do that. I'm not gonna dive into how to create happiness right now. I'll do it in another video. But creating happiness within yourself is gonna help give you that self-validation so you don't have to require it from others. And that's gonna help take this off the table to where you don't feel like because you do something and people don't respond to you, that it's not good. Okay, because that's typically the humane response where if we do something and people don't respond in the way we expect them to based on the work we put in, they don't see that, guys. Like, they don't see the work you put in. So you can't expect them to respond in a certain way and being able to be able to go through your journey in business, right, and growth in business is going to help you understand that you don't need that. And that's how you're able to do that. So the next thing, <clears throat> I should probably use a different marker for this, but I won't go into, um, is going to be praise. And this is actually like, this one's actually really tough. So um, in the terms of like validation and praise, praise is a tough one because you're not going to get Here's the thing, even though you aren't required to get validation, when you get praise, who can agree with this that you feel good about yourself, right? That's why praise is important, but you're not gonna get it from people looking at your business usually. Usually people are just gonna watch from the shadows or they're going to invest in you and that's when you get praise from those people, but <clears throat> very rarely are you gonna get a lot of praise from people that have like no affiliation with your business or what you're doing. Whether you're an artist, whether you're um, a musician, whether you're, you own an online business like I do, uh, regardless of what you do, like people aren't gonna give you this praise. So here's how you can be able to not expect validation, okay, to create happiness within yourself, and not expect praise and still get it, and to be able to have it like in your back pocket on reserve. Okay, so this way you can still have the praise. It's funny, because I'm gonna tell you guys a quick story. I used to work at a gym called Lifetime Fitness, and. Uh, you know, I was a great sales rep there. Ha ha like the post if you're on this, guys. Hashtag live if you're watching right now. And I was great there. I was always in the top 1% in sales. And this new guy came in. And everybody told him, you know, what I was doing there. And he was determined. He was a D1 athlete. He was determined to beat me. He came in. You know, he's in sales now. And he was beating me for the first half of the month, which the way I do business, all my business is done on the back end. Even then, I was all about selling on the back end of my process, like I do now. Um, so he came in, he was beating me the first half of the month, and I remember telling him, hey man, I'm super proud of you, right? Affirmation, giving a little praise. And I was like, but I need you to bottle the feeling up that you have now and put it in your back pocket on reserve because you're gonna need it later because you're still in the learning curve of this. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna beat you by X amount of memberships. And sure enough, I beat him by like 25 or 30 some odd memberships that month uh, within the last week because that's just the way I do my business. Um, and I, that's how I did it back then too. So gym memberships, guys, you can do it with anything, whether it be online marketing, business memberships, um, literally anything. You could sell on the back end with anything. So anyway, the way that you get your praise is this. Let me get a different marker. You're gonna start something called a praise portfolio. Okay, this is something that I've started for myself, portfolio. And I started this actually recently, probably over the last month or so. And let me just circle that so everyone can see it. And um, the reason why I've done this is because in the terms of being an entrepreneurship, what's gonna happen is you're gonna feel super discouraged and you're gonna have a lot of dark days and you're gonna have a lot of doubt. And it's okay if you do, that's like totally normal. And the thing with entrepreneurship is that it doesn't take much for, for that one piece of doubt from the right person to poison your harvest, okay? And your harvest being what you've accumulated through mindset and through actual um, work being done and profit being done. Um, thanks, Dean. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, this is, guys, the reason I'm doing these whiteboard trainings now, uh, first of all, if you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're not, then if you're on YouTube, these are replays for my Facebook Lives that I do on Facebook, so go add me there if you haven't yet. Um, but I'm doing these because this is what goes on in my head. This is what I learned behind the scenes, guys. And a lot of people just, they see my highlight reels, right? They see me go out and they see me make $50,000 in a month, or they see me go out and close deals and get on the phone and train people and they see those things but that's a highlight reel okay and that makes doing this really unrealistic so that's why i want to give you guys a scene i want to take you into my world and let you know what goes on in my mind so this way you guys could um, take what works for you here and be able to apply it in the way you can apply it because um, there's actually an overflow of knowledge now with the internet because everything's so accessible and people forget that knowledge isn't power okay because not the same knowledge the same knowledge doesn't work for everybody in the same way so i just want to let you know what goes on behind my mind and how i'm able to stay consistent with my process and creating a praise portfolio is one of them because 
as somebody in business, you cannot live on validation because no one's going to give it to you. But validation is important for us as human beings because of the work we put in. We kind of want to see some praise for it. And um, over here, the praise, you're not going to get a lot of because people just expect you to do what you're doing in business. So you're not going to get that kind of praise unless somebody's invested in you and you showed them some type of return, monetary or not, tangible or not. So you want to create something called a praise portfolio. And you want to be able to put the few, um, I'm going to just write down here, I'm going to write good things that people say about you. And you're going to screenshot those. Okay? You're going to screenshot all of these good things. And you're going to put them into this praise portfolio. And this way, you don't want to use this often. Okay? This is a reserve. This is saved for your dark days. This is saved for the days that you want to quit. This is saved for the days that you can't pay your bills because you're pursuing something. I'm, like, I'm not going to get into like, should you quit your job or not? That's a totally different topic. Um, but you're going to put them into this praise portfolio. So whenever you feel low, right, because you put in so much work and maybe for some reason your compounded actions haven't manifested yet. So you're not actually seeing a return and nobody's validating you for all the time that you're putting in, even though it hasn't actually created the end all product yet. Um, so, so you're not getting any praise, right? Maybe you're not getting any um, feedback on maybe a project that you're working on and, or maybe you did do something and it generated a great return, but still you aren't getting any praise for it. Whether you're an entrepreneur or you're working for somebody else, right? Because I know a lot of project managers deal with this and corporate and things like that, been there, so I get it. Um, so you're not gonna get a lot of praise. So with a few praise that you do get, screenshot it, okay? I want you to take those off the internet I want you to screenshot them and put them into a folder. And then anytime you're feeling down or dark or going through one of those days, take this out, okay? I want you to take this folder out and I want you to look at it. And this is gonna help you realize, and when I was at my darkest day, guys, before I started doing a praise portfolio for, on a digital aspect, I had to do it in person. And what that means is that I actually, um, back when I thought my whole life was ending, and I thought I was like gonna go to prison and all this stuff, and it was a really bad ordeal. Um, it, I had a lot of people saying stuff about me, and then I had a, lot, a handful of people saying something else. So what I had to make the choice to do was I wrote down everything on one stack of cards, okay, that every, everything that everybody was saying I was. Okay, I wrote that in one stack. In another stack, I wrote down everything I knew I was. Okay, everything that, the closest people to me said I'm capable of and able to do and moving the world forward. So now I had these two stacks of cards and I had to choose which one I wanted to live in. So clearly I chose this stack because you can't live in both. So I chose this stack of everything I knew I was and then I go back and I look at those cards every day. Okay, because looking at that is affirmation, regular affirmation to me because people across the internet, even though everybody's great, Right, everybody is really encouraging um, to me on the internet and stuff here as I you know, give and help other people. It's not, it's not as consistent as you might want it to be in your life. And for me, you know, I guess my, that's my love language is affirmation. And for me, I have to have that regular affirmation and I know that as a person. So for me, I give that to myself because you know, I've not, we don't, we're all across the world, right? Everyone watching this right now. So you're not going to get that level of consistent affirmation. That's why people actually have mentors because it makes it a little bit easier to be able to confide in somebody. But um, so that affirmation I give to myself, which is why you don't need validation from other people because you're constantly able to reassure yourself what you're doing is impactful. And then if you're not getting the praise yet, right? Because you're not going to get a ton of praise throughout the process, okay? Especially starting out. So you need to create a good things right, snippets, and then put them in a praise portfolio. And I've been doing this forever. I used to like to just do it on paper because it made, me, it, made it feel like it came alive. I feel like anything you do on the computer um, in the terms of like creativity tends to get kind of stumped a little bit um, just because there's like a sheet of glass between you and actually touching what you're creating. And I like to be able to feel what I'm doing. It makes me feel like it's more real. Um, so I usually do everything on paper first and then I put it over to the internet. But um, guys, this is how you can be able to fight discouragement and doubt in this journey um, of being an entrepreneur in business and to be able to fight those lonely, dark feelings that you might feel. So you got so Lewis has got a smile file, see? And if you guys don't know Lewis Alvarado, this, Lewis is a, a full-time digital nomad. He just made a comment in the post here in case you're watching this on YouTube and you can't see what I'm talking about. Um, so. Lewis made that post and 
Lewis knows, man. Like any entrepreneur you talk to, especially the ones that are really excelling in the space, can tell you straight up, it's a very lonely journey. And not just online entrepreneurship, but entrepreneurship in general, because guys face it, right? The majority of the world is trained and conditioned to understand that they need to go to college to get a good job, okay? They're tr but as entrepreneurs, we're trained to believe that college at $60,000 a year with no guarantee on the back end is a scam, right? So you can see the difference in mindsets. So um, yeah, this is a, it's a, entrepreneurship's a different world, guys, and that's why I wanted to make this video because not enough people talk about how to be able to battle discouragement and doubt as an entrepreneur and not a lot of people talk about how lonely that can actually be and uh, thank goodness for people online that can like communicate with you but they're still not in person with you so it's important like Lewis said he has a smile file I call it a praise portfolio and um, I like to be able to go back and see like the good that people say because you know there's times where if you sell online products you're gonna get disputes that just happens there's times where if you're providing a service, some people aren't gonna like it, so they might write something about you on the internet. That just happens, right? Not everything is 100%, you wanna know why? Because we're human. And, um, but modeling, yeah, so Michelle makes a good point. And I know that's totally ragging on college, you know, everything has its benefit in one way or the other. You know, some of the doubts to entrepreneurship is that, you know, there's no guarantee and some people fail. You know, it is what it is. And Michelle's right, there's some good things about college too, and I agree with that. I like the whole idea of like, um, like the networking connections that you make. But that's really, that's what I like about it. Even though I didn't go, but, or dropped out, pretty much the same thing. Um, do you have any questions on here? Yeah, so guys, uh, drop, hey, yeah, if you guys haven't seen my new mug, I love novelty mugs, right? That's like my thing. This is my new one. So if you guys have any comments, let me know. Drop them in the, um, in the comments section here. I'll answer them right now. Um, started using it recently and loving it so far. Awesome, nice Catherine. Um, there's an app called Thinka. I have never heard of that. That seems, that seems pretty cool though. Where you can record affirmations in your own voice and set it to music, that's pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, I'm glad to see some people are doing this. And if you're not doing this, and I highly, highly, highly suggest it, because if you're looking to go into entrepreneurship, trust me, I remember what the thought was and it's like, am I gonna make it in business? That's the first thing you think before you dive into entrepreneurship. Now I promise you after you get into entrepreneurship and you truly commit to the process of winning and not failing in entrepreneurship, what ends up happening is you now maybe go through a transition of am I gonna succeed to holy shit, this is lonely because there's nobody around here that can really understand why I'm so obsessed with my process, right? So you're gonna go through a lot of different mindset shifts and I'm not gonna take you through each one right now, but what I did wanna take you through is when you're going through this and you've passed the point of where you're already committed, right? So failing isn't even like a, anything that goes through your mind like that just doesn't happen. Um, you're gonna realize that uh, it's just about battling this right here, doubt and discouragement. Because if you guys wanna know the truth in my business, now, I talk to a lot of other people too that own multi-million dollar companies um, from e-commerce to brick and mortar. And I can tell you right now, like every day I feel like my business is gonna collapse. And that's one of the reasons why I work so hard. When you are going from having nothing, and a lot of you can probably relate to this, but when you go from having nothing to be able to build something, the hardest thing with growth is letting go. And it's because we grow up um, and it's so hard to have what we have now is so hard to get that we never had it that we don't want to let go of it. And we don't want to take the chance of having somebody else be able to do what we're doing to be able to sustain it or scale it. Because nobody will do what you're doing as passionately as you're doing it because it's your baby. So to be able to um, get someone to buy into your vision, to be able to execute at the level you're executing, it's hard. And, and truthfully, like nobody's going to do that. So you just got to learn to let go as a business owner to scale. Um, so Deshaun, appreciate that. Uh, Deshaun said that's amazing. Um, affirmations. So cool guys. Yeah. So I just wanted to let you into my mind a little bit. This is going to be a short video, but this is how you can battle discouragement and doubt as an entrepreneur in this lonely life of business and understand that you don't need validation. You need to be able to create happiness within yourself by falling in love with your process and understanding that all of your compounded actions will manifest 
but you need to be able to be happy with what you're doing, with your purpose, okay, and your passion. And then over here is praise. You're not gonna get it, okay, especially not right away. So the little praise you do get, make sure you screenshot it and put it into a praise portfolio in a digital format, or if you get letters, put them into a little file next to your desk. And whenever you're in your darkest day and you feel like you wanna quit, or you feel like this isn't gonna be for you, or you're doubting who you are, what you're doing, or you're discouraged because maybe you're not financially where you wanna be spiritually, physically, mentally, you're not supporting the people, like your employees like you think you can, whatever it is, pull this folder out, folder out and realize that you have created something successful and right now you're just going over a little bump in the road. That's all it is, a little bump in the road. We all go through seasons, as does our business, as do, as do we mentally, physically, and spiritually and seasons pass, okay? Some seasons are worse than others. Some are droughts, some are floods, and then you have spring, which is gorgeous and beautiful. So um, you're gonna go through seasons. You gotta understand that as a person, as an entrepreneur, uh, really just as a person in general in life. So anyway, I hope this was helpful, guys. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel and write down below other videos you'd like to see or kind of figure out like the way my mind works and the way that I actually approach things in life. Um, if you're watching this on Facebook, then uh, yeah, drop a, drop a comment if you thought this was helpful. And yeah, that's it guys. So I'm gonna get ready for this interview with Chad at 11. So join me in the Facebook group, SMMA Six Figure Sales Secrets, and watch how Chad explains how he built a multi-million dollar company and agency, and he's able to retain the majority of his clients to be able to build that up and having, having been around like nine or 10 years now. So awesome guys, I'll catch you later. Have a great rest of your day.